Hi, and welcome to a drive into the Trudos Mountains in Cyprus as part of our winter break with Jet 2 holidays. We'll have some hints and tips and take a look at different aspects of driving in Cyprus. I suppose we should introduce you to our chariot Martine, a name taken from the letters of the number plate. You'll notice the license plate's background is red. That's because it's a hire car. And in front of us is an example of the roads we will travel in this video. You may have caught our other video on driving in Cyprus. If not, I'll pop that up at the end. But don't worry if you haven't, I'll still fill you in with all the key facts you'll need to know if you plan to pick up a hire car. So our base is in Pathos in the southwest of the island and as I said we're heading towards the Trudos Mountains some 65 miles or 110 kilometers away before looping round and heading back on an alternate route for a journey of around about 110 miles or 177 kilometers. So the first thing you'll notice is that we're driving on the left in right hand drive cars. That's because Cyprus was under British administration at the turn of the 20th century. However, distances and speed limits are in kilometres and kilometres per hour. You'll find the signposts are in Greek and English, and I found driving in Cyprus particularly easy. So you know, we're here in winter, mid to late February, on a winter sunbreak with Jet 2 holidays, so I guess the roads are quieter than in peak season. There are four main road types in Cyprus, A and B and E and F. Don't ask about C and D, I have no idea. We're travelling along the B6, when we return to Pathos, we'll head along the A6, the road with the fastest speed limit. But don't get too excited, that's 100 km per hour. In our video we'll be taking in villages, some stunning views, the old monastery and stopping along the way to look around. Now we're going to start heading north by taking the E606, which should just be up here on our left. There it is. To be fair, this E road doesn't look much different from the B road we've just left. But we'll see how it changes as we climb. And talking of climbing, the temperature along the coast road is around 20 degrees centigrade or 68 degrees Fahrenheit on this February day. So if you're on a winter break like us, then remember to throw an extra layer or two in the car. It's going to get cooler as we climb, as you'll see. You may have noticed I speed up the action on occasion so that I can squeeze more footage in. But I promise I'm sticking to all advertised speed limits. I promise I will stop talking occasionally and let you enjoy the route, but I want to pack in as much helpful information as possible. And now a quick word about speed limits. The speed limit along this road is 80 km per hour, which is around about 50 miles an hour. It drops on the sharper bends, but everything was clearly signposted on the roads we encountered. Once you reach the outskirts of towns and villages, the speed limit then lowers to 50 km per hour and slows even further over speed humps. I'm amazed by how quiet the roads are. You'll notice the higher you climb, the less densely Cyprus is populated. There will still be traffic, 
and some of it slow moving, but check out the consideration of this driver and hear Martin roar. Yep, that had me pinned to my seat. As I mentioned earlier, this is so relaxing. Well made roads, clearly signposted and a beautiful day. What could be better? Now hopefully you're enjoying this little drive in Cyprus. If you are, then why not give us a like? We'd really appreciate that. And if you like my style of videos, then why not subscribe so you can follow us on our travels near and far. I have to be honest, I'm really enjoying the landscape. You may have noticed it's become a little chalkier and at this altitude a little cooler. Ideal for viniculture. With the density of trees increasing, we know we're getting closer to the Paphos forest. And just to clear up any confusion, Paphos is one of Cyprus's six districts, whose capital we left this morning, the city of Paphos. And up here we discover a monastery, whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce, on our left. This is not the only one we would come across on our road trip high up in the mountains. However, we're going to poodle through the village of Panapanagaya. I have a rule of thumb that I follow when I'm travelling in an unfamiliar country. Let the locals get on with their lives. I get the feeling from passing through that these folks are hard working and they don't need another tourist making life more difficult. And this is our turn to the right, heading towards Cedar Valley. We have joined the F726. As you can see, the road has become a little narrower and the views have become even more impressive. I think if you can find somewhere safe to pull over and enjoy the views, then you really should. As always, take caution when pulling off the road because you don't want to be changing a tyre up here. Or worse still, waiting for a relay truck. It seems you're miles away from the sandy beaches of southern Cyprus now, and you can detect the whiff of cedar in the air, along with a hint of wood-burning fires. I could see it for ages, but Martine beckons and it's back to the open road. We're sticking to the F726 and I'll leave you in peace for a moment. This was interesting. A coach. I'm not sure I'd want to meet him coming the other way down these roads. I guess I just need to be prepared. And then you notice the road has widened. I wonder if I'm still on the F726. Fortunately the next sign confirms. I am still on the same road. We continue to climb. These are the roads I love. We're looking for a turn off to our right. This should lead us through Cedar Valley. And this looks promising. Indeed it is. We're now onto Cedar Valley Road. There's a couple of things we know. Firstly, the road has narrowed once again. And secondly, there appears to be a few rocks that have fallen onto our path. 
so we're going to need to be cautious. While I'm watching the road, I'll let you enjoy the next section in peace. We're now coming to the end of the Cedar Valley Drive and joining the E740. This will take us towards our next destination, the Kikos Monastery. we find another opportunity to take in the beautiful vistas and enjoy that clean air. Now you may have noticed there are not many other cars around. That's not a trick of careful editing. It is really very quiet up here. So we now arrive at the Kirkus Monastery. We don't plan to head in, but we'll take the chance to have a little leg stretch. There's some parking spaces in front of the monastery, but there's also another car park on the edge of town with some facilities. So let's head there. You can tell we're here in off season, but a few stores are open. A chance to pick up some local specialities to snack on for our return journey. Let's head back and take a look at the Kirkus Monastery. The Holy Monastery of the Virgin of Kikos was founded around the end of the 11th century. Although the current church dates from 1745, it still retains certain Byzantium features. Sitting at an altitude of 1,318 metres above sea level in the Trudos Mountains, it is understandably remote and very peaceful. We're now heading east along the E912 towards Mount Olympus. No, obviously not that one. Cyprus has its own. Again, the landscape is breathtaking. So we plan to head along to Mount Olympus, then drop south to the Omidos Wine Village before returning to the Olympic Lagoon Resort. Our video of the resort is at the end if you want to check that out. In all our videos, key points and locations are timestamped in the description to allow you to jump between sections. I had to decide how long I wanted this video to be, as I had 5 hours of footage, but I really wanted to share how beautiful and how easy it is to drive in Cyprus so I've done the best I can to strike a decent balance. Alternatively, this could aid those struggling to get off to sleep. Anyway, let's enjoy the drive. You may or may not know, but Cyprus is a divided country, with a border between the Turkish North and the Greek South. EU passport and ID holders, as well as British and American passport holders, can travel freely between the two. On our travels, we kept to the South. Along this section of the route, we have caught glimpses of Mount Olympus, and now we have the opportunity to pull over and take in the view.
after the briefest of stops, we feel the road calling again. Our next planned stop is the wine village of Omidos, but we still have some driving to do before we get there. It's only about 20 miles or around 35 kilometers, but there will be plenty to see on the route there. If you're a keen hiker, there are plenty of trails out there with parking spots to allow you to enjoy the wilderness of Cyprus. Remember to dress appropriately because it's a little cool out there in February. If like us you enjoy the open road, then there's also plenty of viewpoints along the way to enjoy the stunning vistas. Now are my eyes deceiving me or is that snow at the edge of the road? It is indeed. There have been signs warning of ice and slippery conditions, but I'm still a little surprised. I didn't think we'd climb that high. We now arrive at the village of Padromas. Janice, our navigator, needs to make a snap decision. Second exit it is then. It looks so sleepy at the moment. I think in the warmer days of summer this would be a great place to escape the heat. Now a word about Martin, our hire car. We use rentalcars.com to explore the options in Paphos. It gave us a list of options and we selected Sixth, who we've used before. The collection was easy, Martin was spotless and the handback procedure was beyond simple. All we had to do was park the car back at the Olympic Lagoon Resort and leave the keys with reception for collection. As a matter of course I took pictures of the car from all angles in case of a dispute. Another option is to walk around the car and video it from all angles. I didn't expect any problems after our experiences with Etta on our Icelandic road trip, but still best to be safe. Of course there were no problems. There's an affiliate link in the description to rentalcars.com if you want to check out your options. It won't cost you any more, but you can help support the channel. You have to admit the navigator has had a relatively easy ride on this trip. So which way now Janice? I guess it's left. We're going to head through the village of Cato Platres. OK, right this time, and we can see signs back to Paphos. This is where Janice comes into her own, because the village is not very well signposted, but we know it's a left here. It's then a short drive to the village's free car park. Time to hop out and take a look around. This is a beautiful, touristy little village that's under 40 miles or 65 kilometers from Paphos. 
or 25 miles or 40k from Aphrodite's rock. So if you don't want to venture too far in your hire car, then this would be the perfect spot. Umidos has plenty of restaurants and cafes to keep you fed and watered. And there's even the Timius Stavros Monastery with its stained glass windows, frescoes and a museum of Byzantine art. But for us, it's a place to wander around and discover the charms of its narrow little lanes. After the briefest of looks at Amados, it's time to return back to the Olympic Lagoon Resort, and this time it's direct along the A6. The speed limit is 100km per hour, but I'm led to believe there is a certain tolerance allowed, although I don't feel the need to test that. So here we are, back at the Olympic Lagoon Resort. I hope you've enjoyed our video, don't forget that like if you have. Happy and safe travels to you all.